Magnus, this gentleman is from the fire department. Your Excellency, I am sorry to disturb you. Mr. Becker's greenhouse burned down, and Mr. Becker asked me to speak with you about it. No, oh, my father did concern me. But, Your Excellency, your son, Werner, apparently caused the fire. Did Mr. Becker make this absurd accusation? But, uh, Baron von Braun, here on this thing, it says, Finder, please return to Werner von Braun, including the address. I see. Then, uh, kindly convey my apologies to Mr. Becker. He will be reimbursed for all damages. A great pleasure, sir. A, a painful duty, uh, sir. Disgraceful. Outrageous. My own son commits arson. He'll burn Berlin to the ground. But, darling, he was only experimenting. What good are these experiments? Now, I insist that if a von Braun shoots off a rocket, it should go where it's supposed to go. <laughs> Professor Obert, what can you tell me about this from Brown? Browner, he wants to get to the stars. He dreams big dreams, that one. You have been Werner's teacher since he was a boy. Tell me about him. I understand the Rocket Society is running short of funds. Not now, please. Short of funds? We are flourishing. Don't joke, Meschke. These things are important. Captain Dornberger, if you are in a position to contribute... Oh, not exactly. But I wonder whether von Braun would be interested in continuing his experiments under the auspices of the army. You'll have laboratory facilities, test equipment... Captain, you seem to run a lovely army. I hope you can afford us. <laughs> we have expensive tests. Ready, Werner? Yes! Open the valves! Why does he risk it out there? He wants to observe the ignition. A record for a static test. Innocent, doesn't it, Colonel Toftoy? Well, since I am here only as the United States Army observer, I have one observation to make. 
Nobody allocates that much manpower and building materials to a project unless it rates pretty high priority. What do you suspect, Major Drummond? There's been a lot of talk about weapons with which Germany will conquer the world. Mystery weapons. Propaganda? It isn't propaganda, Major Hamill. Anything definite? Unconfirmed, but persistent reports from the Dutch, the Danish and the Polish underground. Now, my government have asked for a word of clarification on these mystery weapons. I think the word is Pinamunda. <laughs> on our nerves. What can I do for you? Nothing. Unless you'd like to change your mind and marry me. What's the matter with you these days? Nothing. Have I done something? Is something wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. What time this evening? I'm afraid I can't manage this evening. You don't like it, do you? Neither do I. Meeting in, in dark corners and creeping upstairs so as not to wake the landlady. You don't like it one bit, do you? We are not the sort of people, you and me. No, we're not. Then why won't you marry me? I can't, Anton. I love you, and you... At least you are. You are fond of me, aren't you? You know I am, Anton. I beg your pardon. Twenty minutes to go, Anton. He's a very nice fellow, you know. I do know. I'm just being selfish. You're a wonderful secretary. And I want you to stay in the family. All right, go ahead. You believe, Anton. What time this evening? Same time. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Ah, Rega, where's Dr. von Braun? Uh, he said he uh, wouldn't be in the observation post today, Colonel. Excuse me. He thinks he has a better vantage point. I told him to stay off this roof. I don't want Werner taking any foolish risks. Will you ask him to step down here? It would be a big step. He's, um, he's trying to use a high-speed motion picture camera to find out what goes wrong. He's, um, he's up in his plane. Von Braun? Yes, sir. I want you to keep well out of range. Yeah, that's an order. Yes, Colonel. I'm not worried about you, but the planes, government property. If anything happens, I'll send you back to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Let's try again. Fire rocket. Control. Destroy rocket. It's headed for von Braun's plane. Well, that's it. The vapor trail shows a number of zigzag lines which grow in intensity 
up to the moment of explosion. The failure is structural. Some sort of metal fatigue in the forward area, I should say. The quality of the steel we're getting just isn't up to the job. It wouldn't surprise me if it isn't thought a bit peculiar that we don't have a closer contact with the heads of the party. Look, I'm a scientist. I couldn't care less about all this party stuff. Hitler or the man of the moon is all the same to me. Come to think of it, I prefer the man of the moon. He's near my heart. Are you implying oh, don't that... don't be childish. Oh, gentlemen, please. I'd think it over if I were you. We need better quality raw material and more money. And in my opinion, it's your attitude to the people in control of these things that's sabotaging our work here. Stop this. And that will be all, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, uh, yes. We have been a long time without results, at least in the eyes of the high command. You dream of space flight. But they keep reminding me that in the third year of the war, they want practical results. They settle for a shorter range than the stars. Like London, for instance. But, Colonel, the bullet that can reach the stars can also be fired across the room. Get me that bullet, Werner, before they move in on us. Himmel and the party are always suspicious of anything we in the army do. And there have a few people strategically placed among us. Neumann, for one. <laughs> You would like the assess to take over me and give him your job. No, man, if he wouldn't be such a good engineer, I, I could really dislike him. Well, try it, isn't hard. Colonel C, to it, you're still here when I get back, hmm? Maria looks lovely tonight. I know you'll say it has got nothing to do with me, but I don't think she'll wait forever. My mother really believes I came all this way because of her birthday. Oh, Werner, you may Carl tell us how he got all those medals. Oh, don't embarrass him. Well, we civilians can't earn medals. But we can do our part. We can wear this with pride. The party makes us one nation, one people, unconquered. Heil. <laughs> Things were certainly simpler in the old days when I used to work here. I was happy then. Of course you were. All you wanted to do then was to reach the moon. And all I did was to smash up other people's greenhouses. I didn't know then that I would become an addict. An addict? Yes. To this uh, obsession of mine. Space. It's like somebody who can't stop drinking or smoking. I just can't give it up. But you can help me. By marrying me. Hey. I'm waiting for an answer. You know my answer. But it doesn't excuse you from saying it. Yes, darling. Of course. What's that? Mm -hmm. A drop of soda which fell down when I made my first rocket. I kept it. May I have it? What's for? To, to remind me of what you were like once. I haven't changed. What are you going to do about joining the Nazi party? Huh. <laughs> I have 
much choice, do I? Not if I want to remain at Pinamundo. Is Pinamundo so important to you? Yes, Mother, it is. You want a drink? No, thank you, darling. Yeah, for years I managed to avoid them. Them and their party button, but... Werner, you mustn't join them. Of course, I don't want to join them. <laughs> but if only they can help me, then I'm going to join them. Long ago, they say it witches made a pact with the devil so they could ride on broomsticks. <laughs> My broomsticks fly without the devil's help. But if they didn't, <laughs> I would be willing to sign with them. Nobody is leveling any specific charges. The feeling is simply this. In your particular field, you are the best brains in the Reich. They're from the world. But what did you achieve? Nothing. Rocket after rocket fails to take to the air. First it was inferior metal, then lack of money. Both these troubles have now been rectified. I do not think that we are wrong to expect success. Uh, if you care to come down into the observation post, Gruppenführer, uh, this way, please. You've had your orders. Kindly obey them even if you're not wearing a party button. You shouldn't make fun of these things, Mishka. I they... know, I know, they are important. So they are. To whom, Herr Doctor? To Germany, Mischke. While we are waiting, I would like to show you a few photographs which we took at our new supersonic wind tunnel. In these tests, we can measure the pressure changes at a hundred different points on the body, the wings, the tail fins of any model that's being studied. We can now approach a speed of Mach 5. Where does the term Mach come from? Mach 1 is the speed of sound. Mach 2 is twice the speed of sound, and so on. Name is for Professor Mach. German? An Austrian. An Austrian is not German. Not quite equal to German, but then who is? If these rockets are practical, the war is won. We could level every major city on Earth. Then in peacetime, we'll send rockets all over the world to deliver the mail. Who will be there to receive it? May I ask us this charming sense of humor? That was a very serious technical question, sir. Since we Germans are the only ones who know how to handle rockets, we'll have to train foreign crews to receive them. Very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Van Braun. Are we ready? Fire warning rocket. Fire warning rocket. Warning rocket fired. Sound alarm bells. Sound alarm bells. Alarm bells sounded. Close all gates. Close all gates. All gates closed. Continue countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, fire.
somewhat sure of the moon, eh, Dr. Von Braun? Thank you for the firework display, gentlemen. It's a pity you have nothing to celebrate. When I will do it in the end. Once he only wanted to get to the stars. And unless there will be a successful launching within 30 days, Pinamindo will be closed. Well, there it is. An ultimatum. Do you think you can do this in the time? There's only one answer to that. You can try. Thank you, gentlemen. With the improvement of rocket performance, uh, no, no, make it combustion. With the improvement in combustion, we are again faced with the problem of preventing the walls from overheating. Therefore, we are now irrigating the inner walls of the chamber with fuel. This will act as a protective layer of insulation. Telephone. Colonel Dernberger is waiting for you. Oh, yes. Okay, I'll be right back and then we finish this. Sorry to be late. Oh, that's all right. Have you got a new design? Oh, yes, sir. I left them on my desk. I'll be right back. Oh, Werner, yes. here are those figures you ask for. Thank you. Werner thinks it's here, in the region of maximum dynamic pressure. Yes. Yeah, don't you agree, Anton? It must be there. Yes. Yes, I think I do agree with you. Oh, wait a minute. I'll show you. Look, I'll show you the blueprint. Well, I'll get it. Thank you. I hope you're right. 30 days are almost up and it's got to work. This S says so. wants the blueprint. Will it be long? I don't think so. It's not your usual color. 
I often use it. Do you object? I don't. See you for lunch. Stand by to fire. Close the shutters. Shutters are closed. Fire the rocket. Still going. Maximum altitude. It will hit the Earth with the impact energy of, of 50 locomotives going on full steam, striking the same point. If you could ever get 50 locomotive engineers to arrive at the same place at the same time. <laughs> impact. Distance to point of impact is 161 miles. Altitude approximately 52 miles. I congratulate you, gentlemen. It's amazing what a little persuasion will do even with scientists. Now we're mass producing its destruction. The war will be over on the day we launch these weapons at London. Reichsführer Himmler himself will tell you what a wonderful thing you've done for Deutschland. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. My dear Dr. von Braun, I want to congratulate you and to thank you. It's a remarkable achievement. Thank you, sir. But it's only the beginning. We have always known that a German scientist will someday invent a weapon which will give us victory. And now about the future. Yes? You will want mass production for your rockets. And I want to suggest that you become a member of my personal staff. I want you to join our inner circle. How do you feel about it? Oh, well, sir. Hesitating, Dr. Von Braun. I make this suggestion for a practical reason. I want you to be free of army stupidity and red tape. I already am. I couldn't hope for a better superior than Colonel Dornberger. Our earlier difficulties were the result of high-level indifference. Yeah, go on. Uh, but now it looks as if we are going to be successful. So you think you can get your own way with everybody? Well, we shall see, Dr. Von Braun. We shall have to see. But do think about my suggestion. I'm sure you'd be very happy with the SS. We now run Germany, and uh, the everyday cares of the world trouble us less than most people. Tja. Goodbye, Dr. Von Braun. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Yes, I recognize you, Dr. Von Braun. Get out of this car, you're under arrest. You were supposed to be working for the Reich on military weapons only. What is this, then? A model for a spaceship. To reach the moon, no doubt. Yes, that's its purpose. Scientists have to plan for the future. If we didn't, you would still be riding in ox carts. I've had quite enough of your arguments, Dr. Von Braun. While you were still useful, I had to listen to them. Now I don't. Do you deny that you held up this absolutely vital military program while you played the fool with... with your personal dreams? Yes, I deny it. Deny this, then? One thing these fools will never learn is that a rocket like a tree needs time to grow. 
And no amount of pestering from all these petty Hitlers is going to alter that. And this is going to get you hanged, Dr. von Braun. I'm a scientist. I couldn't care less about all this party stuff. Hitler or the man in the moon, it's all the same to me. Well, come to think of it, I prefer the man in the moon. He's nearer my heart. I doubt if you will even be given the formality of a trial. Take him away. Lock him up. Remind me to salute you at your execution. But we are sitting here like, like a herd of sheep, doing nothing, absolutely nothing to save him. What can we do? Nothing. Except continue with our work. Do you still want the V2? Then, mein Führer, I need von Braun. This can't be true. It can't be. There are men, Gruppenführer Kulp, who are beyond the laws applied to other men by reason of their value. Von Braun's brain puts him in another class. He should be executed. But he's too important. Release him. Yes, sir. Inform the Führer that his instructions regarding von Braun have been carried out. Someday I'll get this fellow Dornberger for meddling in my affairs. Berlin again tonight. Yeah, I think so. Will the war go on much longer? I don't know. Let's be married soon, can we? <laughs> I was thinking yesterday. Remember it was called Cohen's Park and it was in the mountains and your Uncle Helmut took us there? Mm -hmm. I remember. Well, I want to be married there. And I want to stay at the end and walk up to the waterfall like we did before. <laughs> at the stars. Haven't you noticed I always try to stop you? No. Oh, I agree it's the proper thing to do. Everyone in love should look at the stars, but not you. <laughs> they don't make you think of me at all. They make you think of traveling time and orbit mm. and speed velocity. <laughs> Werner? Hmm? The rocket. Are they going to fire it at London? Yes. And, and do you know just where it will land? Not yet. So then it may hit a bomber station. Well, I hope so. Or a children's hospital. Yes, it could. And you don't care? What do you mean, care? We're fighting a war, Maria. Our enemy's bombs are killing our women and children, too. The only thing I can care about is making sure that Germany wins. Look, a soldier fires a gun at a farm. He doesn't know whether he's going to kill another soldier, a chicken, or the farmer's wife. There is no difference. There is a difference. I can't explain it, but there is. And you can't think about things like that. If a soldier thought like that, he would never be able to pull the trigger. When he was making up his mind, the enemy would shoot him dead. No, I, I can't concern myself that way. Oh, Werner, you frighten me. Sometimes I think you belong in a different world. I love you, but you frighten me. <laughs>
This is the last one to come through. This shows a completely new design for the tailpiece. Contact's doing a fine job. Yes, she certainly is. But I'm beginning to feel a bit anxious about her. I think it's time we got her out of here. Yeah, yeah, I just bruised my arm a little, that's all. Mm. Was a bit near. A bit of a firecracker. I'd just like to get my hands on the guy who thought of it. Uh, don't worry. We're planning our own fireworks for those V2 geniuses. I must finish this. Of course. Most important. Top secret. You go along. I'll meet you over there. I'll get this done far quicker if I'm left alone. The telephone. Yes? Fräulein Elisabeth Schlechter? No, this is Elisabeth Bayer. You've got the wrong extension. Anton. Yes? What is it? Wait in the cafe. Don't leave there until I tell you. Well? She had an appointment with her dentist. She forgot to tell us about it. Doesn't matter. It can wait. Professor Obert, let's go through these figures. both of them, please. Thank you. Number, please. Get me the second number now, please. I am trying to trace my secretary. I believe she had an appointment with you for this evening. Elizabeth Bayer. Oh, she hasn't. I'm sorry, I must have made a mistake. Don't look so sad. She'll come back to you. Listen, that's twice today. They say Berlin is a shambles. They say, they say you are like a lot of old women. Why don't they tell us what's going on there? 
The Chilean people aren't children. They ought to be... Go to the ship! Would you like some coffee? Yes. Elizabeth, oh. Quite a night. More than 700 dead. But at least we saved our blueprints. I tried to get back, but they wouldn't let me through. I'm glad you weren't here. I admire you, Vanna, that you can still think about the blueprints. Thank you. You certainly chose the right time to go to the dentist. You said you had an appointment with the dentist, but you didn't. You didn't, did you? I tried to get back, but the military police stopped me. Answer my question. I tried, but they wouldn't let me through the perimeter. Answer my question. And what were you doing that day? With the blueprint? Anton! Don't Anton me! I don't feel well. I must go. I must. Go. No! must have seemed a, a perfect idiot to you. I meant everything. Everything I said about us. Oh, no. You just used me. All along, I knew that, that something was wrong. Those pretended emotions and pretended passion. Who are you working for? The Russians? The British? The Americans? Who? 
I don't really care who. Just tell me why. Why? You know how my husband died? My first guess would be suicide. But I don't care how your husband died. He was like you. Serious, brilliant. Met him when I lived in America. We'd only been married three weeks. We were having breakfast in this lovely hotel in Bavaria. The door suddenly flew open. Three SS officers came in. Shot him dead. They were looking for an entirely different person named Bayer. Not Bayer. Not my husband at all. They said it was a regrettable mistake. Now you know why. You expect me to, to believe a story like that? I'm sorry, but I'm not that foolish. What are you going to do? Report you, of course. Report it all. Then you can tell your tragic stories to the SS. You know what the SS do to spies? Yes, I do. You do? How dare you judge me? How dare you that are so blind to the misery you've caused? I'm glad I've helped to stop you. Stop me? Yes, all of you and you. You're just like a slave to Vern as if he was God. Number, please. You do anything he wants you to do, anything. Anything. Number, Scientist please. without thinking. Scientist! Number, please. Top priority calls only. This is a top priority call. Number, please. Number, please. Anton, don't you see? I, I do love you. Shut up. I wanted to marry you. I was as Shut honest up. as I could have been. Shut up! Shut no! Up. Shut no! Up. Shut no! Up. Shut no! Up. No! 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 That's about the only place left standing. Oh, don't worry. Well, you better take these down, too. Yes. And, uh, oh, yes. <laughs> That's not important. Salaries. Yes, this, too. If Dornberger wants me, I'll be down in the bunker. Yes. Good, eh? Well, I don't think we should be hearing any more from Pina Munda. Not for a while, at least. Well, they'll have to get a move on if they want to use it again ever. The German armies are crumbling on all fronts. Major Taggart, what's been arranged about taking this place over when the moment comes? Pina Munda, we have a special crew standing by, sir, to move in and grab whatever equipment they can lay their hands on. Well, before our Eastern allies grab it first, eh? That's the general idea, sir. And the personnel, the people responsible for creating the V2? Oh, we'll get them too, sir. And they'll pay for it. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that, Bill. They're war criminals, aren't they? There isn't a court on earth that wouldn't find them guilty. Not a court on earth. Well, gentlemen. Take your choice. 
Dornberger called from Berlin and said that Hitler wants us to destroy Peenemünde and everything in it. Ordnance wants us to move uh, our equipment, documents and supplies further west. The local party leaders want us to stay here and defend this place to the death. Some choice, like playing Russian roulette with every chamber loaded with the real Russians. Work in the shops has almost come to a stop. Nobody knows what to do. No, I do. What? Well, we don't know exactly where the Russians are. But from the way the gunfire is getting louder every hour, I would say they are rapidly closing in. Why? They want us. They've always known how to use foreign scientists and engineers. Of course, they would know how to use us. But do we want to be used by them? That's the point. If you're asking me, no. So, if we want to get out, we'd better hurry. That's treason. Oh, sit down, Neumann. Treason? Against what? Against whom? When the SS hears ah, about this... So they would run us. Let's be frank. It's obvious the war is lost. If you want to have anything to say about whose hands we wind up in, time to choose is now. There is still Germany. Our country. In a few weeks, there will not be one square foot of Germany, which won't be occupied by foreign troops. There won't be one single key man from Peenemünde outside of an internment camp. Come on, Werner. Let's hear your plan. To go south. Now, before it's too late. And allow ourselves to be rolled over by the American army. They'll welcome us as warmly as the Russians. And I mean warmly. I don't know. They talk a lot about liberty. Who knows? They may actually believe in it. The Americans work with the British. It was on London that our rockets fell. Still, we have to work somewhere. Germany is defeated. Yes, I agree with you. We What's got into you? Don't you... Don't you owe Germany anything? We spent 15 years advancing rocket technology. And we know we are way ahead of the rest of the world in this field. In Germany, there will be no more rocket development for years to come. Now, shall we throw away what we have? Or shall we make what we know available for others to complete the job? I personally propose to stay alive and go on working. Don't you agree with me, Anton? I'm sorry. For the first time, I don't agree with you. Neumann is right. This is treason. You are a traitor. That's a matter of opinion. Well, most of us were once familiar with a procedure called voting. But what about your families? I mean, Germany is their home. Werner, what about Maria? Hmm. I discussed this with Maria some time ago. We shall meet again later. As for your families, we'll try to take them with us. Now come and vote. Who will try to get to the Americans with me? Oh, Neumann! I thought the scientist was a servant of the state. When the master is dying, the servant has to find a new one. Mm -hmm. Then you are all traitors. Every single one of you. Oh, drop it, Anton! You are a valuable man. You, as a person. Regardless of nationality. You excuse yourself, if you like. 
If you can, I can't. I'm a German. I'm not a Nazi, but I am a German. And I'm ashamed that I ever called you my friends. Any of you. Well, one thing is certain. We are to preserve our work. We'll have to move a lot of people and equipment. Germany's transportation systems are shambles. We take our own cars and trucks and as many as want to come with us. And where will we find enough gasoline for such a huge move? There are beautifully on rocket fuel. There'll be roadblocks and checkpoints on every corner. We have to write our own travel orders and bluff our way through, after all. Peenemann still has the highest priority. Anton, come with us. I'm sorry. I cannot follow your smooth reasoning. Go ahead, do what you want. Don't you understand? I am a German, and I stay. Right away. Most of our catch of war criminals have been extremely eloquent, Dr. Von Braun. I've heard more alibis these last two weeks than I ever knew existed. A great brain like yours may even have a new one. I have none. Even that fits the pattern. The martyr complex. You could have mentioned that your father was a member of the cabinet which was overthrown when Hitler came into power, and that Himmler tried to have you executed? Oh, fine. Let's pin a medal on him. Tell me something, Dr. Von Braun. Do you consider yourself a war criminal? If everyone who worked in a munition factory is a war criminal, then I'm one also. I was developing rockets long before Hitler took over. Space travel is all that really interests me. Destroying thousands of innocent British civilians comes under the heading of space travel, does it? When there's a war, every man wants his country to win and it works to that end. And, of course, any means justifies that end. Don't you have a saying, it's my country, right or wrong? Besides, if I had refused this job, I would have been labeled enemy of the state. You must forgive me, Major, but I prefer to stay alive and continue with my job. You would, Doctor. Since war itself is a crime, we are all war criminals, aren't we? But we didn't all attack Poland, Belgium, Holland, France without warning. We didn't all destroy millions of innocent men and women in gas chambers. Did I personally? Oh, no, of course not. No German is ever personally responsible for anything. If you had all stood up together and said no, this butchery would have stopped. There never would have been a war. <laughs> have you ever lived in a dictatorship? Every man distrusts his neighbor doesn't dare make a stand for fear of losing his own life. In that respect, I'm guilty of being a human being. I'll tell you what I think you are. I think you were guilty of inventing one of the most infernal weapons ever devised by man, of putting it to use in support of the most iniquitous regime in the history of the world. You are guilty, you will be tried, and you will be hung.
Von Braun. Yes, sir. If you want to carry on your research, we have the resources. Suppose General Eisenhower gave you such an opportunity. Is that enough for, sir? We recognize the importance of your achievements. Do you want to go to the United States? Naturally, that's why I surrendered. But, Colonel, I can't make rockets all by myself. We know that. All those who volunteered and cleared by counterintelligence will go to America for a probationary period of one year without families or dependents, just to see how we get along. You'll have to face lots of criticism, and it may be a long time before you're accepted by the American public. We don't expect to be received with open arms. Well, will you leave us now, please? Yes. We've received a number of intelligence reports on you. Some suggest that you be tried as a war criminal. Our decision to harness your brain power is based on a report by one of our agents who will make the identification. You don't really mean they're not even going to put him on trial? No trial. Sorry, Bill, the missus just came through. You mean they, they'll simply use him? When a man's as brilliant as that, he... Well, I guess he has a special value of his own. Look, Bill, you and I have been friends for a long time now. I realize you take this as a personal thing. Don't I have a right to? Wouldn't anybody, if one of those things killed his wife and baby? Yes, you have every right but to. But that's not the point. Don't you see it's downright immoral to use this man? He's our enemy. Colonel, before I wore this uniform, I was a newspaper man who roasted the hide off the Von Browns of this world. And I can't stop now just because I'm wearing this suit. That man is the actual stuff we fought Germany to destroy. It's probably only a matter of expediency. Expediency? When Chamberlain shook hands with Hitler, he was expedient. It's four o'clock, Colonel. Major, you'll have to come in for the official identification of the top Pinamundi people. When she ran away, I thought it was only because of the raid. Do you think Anton knew? What does it matter? We are traitors and she's a spy. All that matters in war is to be right. Well? I've checked the list. They're all here, except one. Which one? Anton Draga. Where is he? He stayed at Benamenda. Why did he stay? It was his choice. So there is one who didn't trade in his skin. Come with me, please, for additional processing. So he stayed. Don't. Why shouldn't I? I've had enough of the whole dirty business. So have I. The whole dirty business. Well, gentlemen, you're going to have your hands full. Here are your orders to ship Von Braun's group to White Sands Proving Ground in New Mexico. All except Dr. Neumann, friend of the SS and a few of the others. Do they go by boat or by plane, sir? I'd suggest a boat. A nice leaky boat that would sink if it was rammed by an oyster. <laughs> Taggart. This picture here says with love. Don't use it to stoke your hatred. Maybe I'm not as forgiving as you are. having them here is carrying Western hospitality a little too far. I'm not shaking hands with any Germans. We fought one war with them, didn't we? We just got through with another. I still don't like them.
I told you we should have gone to the Russians. After you've drawn your bedding and unpack, I'll show you around the installation. Yes, sir. Dr. Bosco here is in charge of our rocket program. It may not be as advanced as yours, but it's still classified. Come on, I'll take you for launching pad inspection. If anyone had ever told me that I'd see those men, or that rocket, on American soil, I wouldn't have believed them. Bill, you have to realize that the world must go on. Unless they blow it up. I have a reason for wanting to be here, but you don't, after all you've been through. But my job isn't finished. Intelligence wants me to stay with this group. After all, I should understand them better than anyone else. You think you understand them, but you don't. Nobody does. It is like a monastery. I think I'm getting desert fever. I keep seeing mirages. All the cactus plants turn into dancing girls. You young people are never grateful. I thought America was full of curly blondes wearing satin underpants and in soldiers' hats marching about in front of brass bands. You are thinking of Hitler's Germany. Oh. Hello. Hello. We are going to have to work together again. I think we must speak of the past now and get it over with. It will be easier if we can be friends. You are the only woman we are going to see for a year. We'll be friends, all right. <laughs> I hope you can run fast enough. <laughs> You've got that all wrong. You'll be seeing plenty of women. It's your own families you won't be seeing for a year. I know what you must feel about me. The stupidity of war is not our fault, either of us. Anyway, you are a good spy and a great secretary. Tell me, this man Taggart, why is he here? He's a special intelligence officer assigned to your group. Uh -huh. He hates us, huh? He'll get over it. We all get over our hates in the end. something to report to Washington anyway, a New World Altitude record. You don't seem all that excited, Doctor. It wasn't exactly unexpected, sir. We could do much better if we had the necessary materials. <laughs> Maybe there's been some news. These things take time in the Army, you know. Time, it's always the same. People don't believe that what we do is important. Even I would like a little more work to do. The monastery is getting me down. Weekends are the worst. Everybody in the whole place pairs off and goes away to enjoy themselves. Even the monkeys. <laughs> now, how does it feel up there? Hey? You know, I envy you. Who would have thought that our ancestors would be in space before us? What's the matter with them? <laughs> Maybe one's just told the other that some of his cousins in Russia <laughs> have gone a lot higher than they have. I don't get lost, boys. Remember, this desert's only about 500 miles wide around here. Good night. Good night, Good night sir. Come on, I'll take you to your quarters. No, Bill. I'll see you in the morning. Working overtime to earn your citizenship, Doctor? This must seem just like Pina Munda all over again to you, huh? Nice, cozy little setup for a defeated enemy alien, don't you think? I'm sorry about your personal feeling toward me. I was brought over to make rockets. And that's what I intend to do. You'd do that, Doctor. And if one of them happens to blow up, I hope you're as near to it as my wife and kid were back in London. Yeah. That's it. That's the reason. How do you like it? I don't 
like it. That's all I can say. You mean you accept the responsibility? You, a kraut? I beg your pardon. You mean a German and a scientist actually accepts the responsibility? I don't feel responsible for what happened to you. Ah, that's more like it. Hitler was to blame, huh? Himmler was to blame. Private Kraut who pushed the button was to blame, but not me. Oh, no, not me. There was something I'd like you to know. Whenever I'm lonely, and I'm often lonely, whenever I hear a little girl laughing in the street, I think of you. And when you're a great, big, brand new American citizen, big public hero and all the rest of it, and you will be, just remember, I'll still be thinking of you my way. You must stop this. Who the hell do these scientists think they are? They've got us all in the palms of their hands. You, me, Joe Dokes, the president. What they do dominates the entire world, and they don't accept responsibility. Men and women don't mean any more to them than the guinea pigs they tie up under their atom bombs or the monkeys they shoot up from here in their precious rockets. They change sides without batting an eyelid. They have no loyalty to anything except their own research. And when they destroy the whole damn world and everything in it, they'll still be saying, oh, sure, we made the bomb that did it. But it's not our responsibility. You just can't go on with this hatred. I agree with Mishka. This is when it's the worst, when everybody drives off for the weekend. Maybe even Maria. You'll be seeing Maria pretty soon. What? I have a present for all of you. The year's probationary period is over. At the convenience of the government, your status is being legalized. This can eventually lead to citizenship, marriage, your own home. <laughs> this acceptance of us of men who until recently were wartime enemies prove that this is a hell of a country. <laughs> How are you, Mrs. Von Braun? Very well. Oh, darling, I'm so happy. I still can't believe it's true. You know, work doesn't matter in America. Oh, darling. Your work matters to you all the time. Now, oh, tell me what's the trouble. It's always the old story. Not enough of the raw material, not enough money. But, darling, in America, there's masses. Messes. Messes of money. Mm. It's not coming to us. People just don't want to know about space. What do you expect to find out, though? <laughs> what does Columbus expect to find out? Certainly not a new world. We really don't know what to expect, either. All we know is equal to the first few notes of a melody. And we want to go out there to find the missing sounds. The ones we've never heard before. I know we've checked the design a dozen times, and we check it a dozen times more. All we need is to build it and launch it. And we'll have the world's first satellite floating in orbit around the globe. Gentlemen, we've got a crash program on our hands. War in Korea. We've a lot of lost ground to cover, but I know you'll do it. The Army's opening a big new installation at Redstone Arsenal. Why is it that it always takes a war? to make people see how useful scientists are.
Here are your travel orders. So, life does repeat itself, huh? Seems to me I once read about the circle of history. Meaning? Not so long ago, you were inventing rockets to fire at us. Now you're off to make one to fire at our enemies. Don't you want your country to win the war? My country, your country? Gets a little confusing, doesn't it, Von Brown? Just which is your country? I've kind of forgotten. Maybe you'd rather I sat back and did nothing. Maybe. Oh, fine. Let's all sit back and do nothing. And let America become the 49th state of Russia. How would that affect you? You'd be right in there. Comrade Von Braun. If you feel like this, why are you wearing that uniform? I won't be after today. I'm out. I've resigned. I'm going back to my old job as a public troublemaker for hot shots like you. You might as well face it, Werner. Taggart is right this time. You are going to make rockets again for war. Oh, I was so happy when you were interested only in space. You don't have to make rockets for war. You know, you could refuse others. Ah, stop talking about things you will never understand. Can't you see? I must stay with my work. I can't allow myself to fall behind. Progress, knowledge, and results are my existence. Can't you understand? of work building the Redstone rocket, and don't go getting the idea that the Pentagon and Congress, for that matter, aren't perfectly aware of how well you've done. You can be proud of yourselves. And when Korea is over. I think people are rocket conscious now. Things will go right ahead. I tell you, this is the turning point. From now on, that factory out there is going to be busier than it's ever been. Now that the war is over, Congress just doesn't want to give money for space research. All best problems. Mm -hmm. There was another one this morning. I had the chance to talk to the great American public about my battle to conquer the universe on a weekly TV program. Huh? Oh. Oh, yes, I forgot that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Werner von Braun and the Space Rangers. Will I let you say what you want? Oh, yes, of course. No holds barred. Then do it. Answer target that way. What good would it do? People would see me and say, wants to get to the moon, huh? What's next week? The man who thinks Judgment Day Thursday, followed by the woman who believes she understands the fishes? I give up, Professor. Oh, no, no. Professor von Braun and the first of the very popular series Great crackpots of our time, huh? <laughs> oh, it's sad, isn't it? It's a fact, but it's sad. No man looks a bigger fool than when he's talking about something he really believes in. You're wrong. You can convince people. What do you want me to do? Go in from door to door? Good morning, lady. I represent Rocket Incorporated. Please buy my product. Easy terms. Launch now, pay later. Just tell them the truth, the way you tell it to me. The way I tell it to you? That's different. No, go on. <laughs> well, I believe that a big part of the future of mankind will take place in what we now call space. Lord knows I'm, 
I'm a practical scientist, not a poet. But I just can't see space as a vast, inhospitable waste. I see it as an unexplored country, a gift to mankind, and it's mankind's duty to accept it. We are going into a time when a country's power will be measured by its scientific achievement, not by the number of bombs it has. The country that will put up the first instrumented satellite will capture the imagination of the world. I want the voice of this country to be the first to speak to the world from outer space. But ultimately, it is essential for the great powers to be equal in space. It is this balance of power which will secure peace. War. Whatever the scientific opportunists of this world may say, it's war and it's only war that has financed and furthered their experiments. The conquest of our own human problems is more important than the conquest of space. In the years since Hiroshima, the bomb hasn't been used again, and why? Because it's held by both sides. Von Braun will give you a lot of nonsense about the benefits of pure science, all to cover up what he's done. But I can tell you what he did in a very few words. London, 1944. But man lives by elements which can destroy him. Fire, water. And he's learned to control these elements. And he must learn the same use of atomic power and rockets. Or he will perish. A long time ago, the leading nations of the world established the principle of the freedom of the seas. And unless we as a nation or the United Nations back up our right to the freedom of the seas of outer space, then we may be left in the dust of history. That was a quotation from a television speech made by a fellow named Werner von Braun. <laughs> Thank you. That's all, gentlemen. Well, General, good luck. Tough to eye, the country owes you a great deal for your missile pioneering. You've laid the groundwork for what I'm expected to finish. Good news, Werner. The United States is going to cooperate in an international geophysical year. They want to give the upper atmosphere a thorough going over. Ionization layers, cosmic rays. And now they need a satellite to get those answers. But we have the Project Starlight, haven't we? Well, we won't get the official go-ahead from the Pentagon until midnight, but they'll either have us, the Army, build the satellite or the Navy. But with our record, I'm certain their decision is bound to favor us. We'll be in your office at midnight. Speaking. The Navy got the job. I thought you had gone over to the Navy with the rest. That's where the news seems to be. The news may be there. Von Braun happens to be here. I didn't hate his gut so much, I could almost feel sorry for him. That means you do feel sorry for him. Yeah, he deserves all he gets. You know what would make me very happy? What? If you'd go down that hall, open his office door, and say, Von Braun, I'm sorry the Navy got the satellite assignment. While the violin plays Moonlight and Roses off stage, what a beautiful scene. I'm in tears already. Women never give up, do they? You got a hopeless case on your hands. Aren't you getting tired of me? Sure, I'm getting tired of you, but that doesn't mean to say I give up. All right. I don't believe in a thing he stands for or anything he's trying to do. If it's going to make you happy, I'll go down there and smoke the peace pipe with him. Come on. Good. Hold on, Brown. Oh, don't you twist the knife, Taggart. I'm not in the mood for you. 
You see? He doesn't love me either. yet? It'll take me a little while. Sit down. Thank you. Do you want it to come in bits, or would you like to take it in one knockout punch? No, what's happened? The news has just come through. The Russians have launched the world's first satellite into space. It's in orbit now. weakened about you. That's what I must remember. Never to weaken, never to forget. Anyway, gentlemen, let us hope the Navy succeeds, and we must wish them luck. Today at Cape Canaveral, the Navy is writing a big piece of American history. For today, America is going into space, and Vanguard, we're with you. The countdown is now almost over. It's six, five, four, three, Two, one, Sputnik, here we come! I'm afraid something went wrong. program, I aim at the stars. It's your money he's been asking for. Nothing can be done without you. You taxpayers must demand that your hard-earned money be spent for more hospitals, better schools, higher salaries for teachers, and forget about the scientists who want you to buy their pies in the sky. Dr. Von Braun is going to Washington tomorrow, and he'll get an okay to put up his satellite, that's for sure. Maybe Von Braun can bluff the government, but not me. He may put this thing into space, and they'll pin medals on him. But he may fail. Then perhaps people will believe what I've been saying. You really believe Whatever what you say? Of this world How can you think this way only. when the Sputnik may be passing over your head right now, at this very moment? This thing up there is a fact. And you cannot make it disappear with words. It's happened! Oh, stop! Oh, will you stop, eh? Let me tell you something. I'm going to put up the satellite and you and the rest of this timid, half-baked idealist can go and jump in the river. Prost! And after building rockets for everybody, what next? You frighten me, Von Braun. You frighten me. You said this once. Don't you remember? A long time ago, you said, you frighten me. I feel as if you would belong to another world. Why did you say that? <laughs> it was when the V2 was being fired at London. And you admitted that it, it might land on a bomber station or on a children's hospital. And you didn't seem to care. And I tried to tell you that... Well, that it wasn't simply enough to leave it to other people and think that it could be off your conscience. Yes. I... I remember. Would you 
can now? Yes, very much. But why does nobody understand that to a scientist, the present must be the future? Yes. The present has to be the future. I don't need to tell you, gentlemen, that with the Sputnik launching and the Vanguard's failure, the United States has suffered a loss of prestige all over the world. The American people expect their government to do something about this. Dr. Von Braun, you have repeatedly said that the Army could launch a satellite using the Redstone rocket. Are you sure you'll succeed? Mr. Secretary, I've seen more rockets fizzle than anyone else in this room. But I'm willing to stick my neck out. How long will it take? I'll put this satellite into orbit within 60 days with a crash program. Well, let's make it 90 days with the crash program. They expect success, you realize that? All right, Doctor. You can have your 90 days and a crash program. Crash program? <laughs> you know what it is? A crash program is based on a theory that with nine pregnant women, you can get the baby in 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> time is almost at hand, and he is expected back here in the blockhouse at any moment. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. I'm gone. I've just come in. Take it easy, Vernon. Yes, everyone is quite confident. Okay, check your utility from fuel vapors. Notify the blockhouse when we're all clear to start generators. Any problems on the pad? No, everything is fine. Control voltage, John. Control voltage, John. Close all the shutters, except the main observation window. All shutters closed except main observation window. Gyro's on. Gyro's on. Check the lock's loading's been completed. Lock's loading completed. Weight reading is 409. Connect assembly to igniters. Roger. Gyro erection on. Control protection. Okay, right down the lead. Roger. Start vibration and RPM recorder. RPM recorder's on. Power transfer off. Check all operating lights and meters for proper operation. Foster control panel checked. Power panel checked. Power panel checked. How's the fuel loading coming along? Loading is completed. Fuel tanks are being pressurized. Thank you. Measuring panel, OK. We are holding at X minus 85, checking a possible fuel pressure leak. That's all this country needs. Another flop. I knew this would be the worst part, just getting it off the ground. What do you want to do? Go out there and light it personally with a match? At least I would like to give an encouraging pad on its tail fins. This third-rate country could jump back into first place again with a home run by Von Braun. Or it could fall flat in its face with the sound of a big, loud nothing heard all the way around the world. And we know which way you're rooting. You want this thing to fail. That's sort of like putting self before country, isn't it? You accused him of that, remember? Fuel pressure normal. Weight reading after last scaffold. Okay, then. Resume count at X minus 85. Countdown resumed from X minus 85. Rudder drive on. Rudder drive on. Record all voltages. 
Voltage is okay. Jet vein deflection. Hold Number it. Two vein. We've got a jet vein deflection. Telemeter indicates jet vein two is deflected. What do you want to do, sir? Forget it, Avon eh, Braun. Yes, we'll forget it. Resume countdown. Okay, resume countdown. Resume countdown. Roger. JPL, telemeter recording on. JPL, telemeter on. We are entering the final countdown stage. The time is now X minus 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, fire! Brown's rocket has been launched, but there are three more stages that must be successfully fired before it can start to orbit around the Earth. Delimeter stations, stand by to report. Second, third, and fourth stages firing. From now on, you're on your own. Second stage fired successfully. No indications of stage three and four yet. Come on, have a cup of coffee and sweat it out with us. Third and fourth stages fired successfully. Repeat, all stages fired successfully. Repeat, all stages fired successfully. Now the waiting really begins. We'll know whether she orbits in an hour and 48 minutes. Well, the final stage has been fired. The rocket should be in orbit right at this moment. Four key tracking stations will report when the rocket passes over. These stations are Caicos, Antigua, Jadro Bank, and Earthquake Valley, California. Earthquake Valley is the last station, and when she reports that the rocket has passed... Then Von Braun's dream will be a reality. Yeah, that's right. Then Von Braun's dream will be a reality. Message received. 
Kaiko's tracking station reports loud and clear signal from the satellite's transmitter. Well, there goes the first one. Now we've only got three left. Roger. Antigua tracking station reports strong signal from satellites. Everything looks fine. The Caribbean stations have checked us out. Our next report will be from Jodrell Bank, England. Jodrell Bank reports. Satellite is passed over. Signal strong. Well, there's only one more to sweat out. Earthquake Valley. Then we're in. You should have heard by now. They picked it up. We're in. Our satellite will circle the Earth every hour and 54 minutes. Six minutes late. You know, I've almost grown to like you, Von Braun. <laughs> Suppose I could say the same about you. Except that one never really likes one's conscience. But if I tried for a million years, I could never understand you. Not really. What... What have you scientists got in here? in the place of a sense of human values. To concern for the future, perhaps. The universe. The whole universe is waiting for us. And we must explore it. That's what makes man, man, and not a mere vegetable. Goodbye, Lon Brown. And good luck with the universe.